Hi, <coughs> hi student. I need to share with you one more chapter for Architecture 110 today that's um, talk about handicap uh, disability. ADA stands for American with Disability Act. This is have 1998 to um, 2015. And it is signed up by George Bush when his friend um, have some idea about that and he signed up for the one they call that's ADA Disability American Disability Act for on up the rule we need to use for the disabled people either they have um, a fly, deaf, um, anything else about uh, disability they can use this one same thing like another lecture we have question you need to answer and email back to me um, like I told you ADA stands for Americans with Disability Act and it is from 1990s it's a civil right uh, established for accessibility guideline for the place of the public accommodation and commercial facility operated by private entity on up regard with this one, we have Fair Housing Amendment Act, 1988-FHAA. And after that, established for Fair House Accessibility Guideline, XFHG. With another one, consistent for four more touring units and uniform federal accessibility standard, UFAS, on of them um, published for uh, protect for disability in uh, architecture so if you see FHAA, FHAA, FHAG, UFAS or ADA this is on of the fill in the plank I will ask in the second quiz and uh, if you see some kind like the accessible route for walking surface they, this is maximum is 120 that means from the land is 20 feet or 20 units we need to high it up one only and after that you connect two point for make the slot one that's the maximum they allow to do for the walking surface with the slot one 120 is the maximum one you cannot do higher it's on the walking surface Besides that, if you see some building and uh, that's it, the public service, you need to serve it for the RAM. The RAM, that means the slope up for the wheelchair can run on that instead of the, uh, the step one, they cannot go. So that's why you need to do the RAM for make sure the wheelchair can run on that one. And the slope one more time, maximum 120. And the rails, if they have the rail and they need to do 32, 36 inches high. 4 feet wide for make sure the wheelchair can run on there if you see the ram one um, the wide from the ram is 4 feet minimum and after that um, the rail one is 32 36 inches high and the slope one you see the slope right here is this one 20 material you can create any kind of material it can be wood can be metal this can be paving um, one thing you can calculate for the slot of the ram is the lane equal the total riser one step up we call that the riser for example right here you see one up from here to here they call that the riser and if you want to calculate that you can calculate the lane from the ram and it's a equal with total riser this is one example for uh, I can talk about that. For example, you see this is one razor, one razor, and another razor. So we have three for total, and this one they say that 22.5 inches, and this one the total rise. So that's why the length from the ram it will be equal 22.5, but the unit is the feet. You see that the unit right here is inches, and the unit right here is the feet. That means the land from the ram equal with the height from the riser, but the units is the feet one, and the unit from the riser is the inch one. So remember like this. This is one way you can calculate for how much for the ram land, and uh, if you know the ram riser. 
30 inches or 32 inches some uh, you add 2 inches for the rail so that's why 30 to 34 from the floor up to the rail one and after that when you design for the ram remember from the end point you need to do for 12 inches farer from this one and the slab one right here for example you see the riser is 12 inches and the land from the ram is 12 feet run that means totally the run right here is 12 feet unit feet and this is unit inches like this one you said from here to here a 22.5 inches and the land from here to there a 22.5 feet some picture for you can see that's so funny from people run step by step and the other one they use the wheelchair on the ram and look like he didn't use a lot of force but the speed is faster and he happy with that but this guy he run from the I mean the highest step to the lowest step he's so tired but he do slower than the people on the wheelchair just funny another rule you need to remember for uh, the handicap design is some kind of elevation and the space for example you see the desk light right here that is the space is 48 inches that mean um, 48 inches minimum and this a from here to here is 36 or 24 so 48 that means 4 feet and this one is 24 so this space is enough for one wheelchair can run to this one this is one wheelchair and we have some design for step look like this if you go to the theater the step up like this is around from a and a half maximum and go like this up here and you need some rail for the handicap can stay there is uh, the rail protect for them so you see if they didn't have the rail and they need to continue with another place and the side from here that means should be higher than the people right here so that they can see for the stage and this is designed for one of the step up designed for the wheelchair uh, standard spray, either spray for allow for one wheelchair can run over that. Usually, when they say standard spray, you remember a circle. It is 60 inches. 60 inches, that means 5 feet uh, diameter. So that's why one circle like this is enough or it qualify for one wheelchair can run inside there. So if they say standard spray, you remember this is the circle 30, uh, I mean 60 inches or five feet diameter or the spray with the rectangular 48 30 48 is four feet and 30 is two feet six that's been qualified for one wheelchair can go so if some people ask you about standard spray remember two things the first one is the circle with 60 inches diameter or five feet or rectangular 48 30 inches the other one we can see that some kind like the shape like T shape it's 60 and 36 for each of them but this one not really much except in the corner the other one is the reach from um, 48 maximum for the reach they can the highest one they can um, I mean reach on and the depth from this one the depth from this one is 24 inches maximum so that means allow they can hit from this point and from the counter you can see the maximum is 34 inches maximum if you have the, the knee space or um, some kind like the space for the, the the knees they need the 15 minimum for this one and the highest one 48 look like here 48 is maximum 15 in the knee space this is one of example so you can see that's when you design for the kitchen the if this is they call that the u shape you need 60 minimum for the distance from this side to another side uh, this one they call that um, the i shape and both of them you can go straight like this nothing in the center same thing 60 and if you have both side open and you need to use for 40 minimum so you see that the distance for the y is different 40 60 60 if you close by wall this is the U shape or the U shape, but nothing, not cabinet right here. You need 60 in minimum, 60 inches. That means five feet. But if you go through both way open, and you need to use for 40 minimum only. 
Handicap restroom is one of design if you have um, architecture major and before you design everything for the handicapped people or the public service, remember the restroom is the one you need to focus on. The first one, you need to space. Like I told you, 60 inches diameter for the circle for the wheelchair can run around from that one. Or you can design for the space. You look at the rectangular space. You can use that also. This is rectangular space for 20, uh, 48, and 30. So that's why enough space for the wheelchair can run in there. Beside of that, you need to circle. This is a circle 60 diameter. Or you see the um, rectangular right here. It's a 48, 30 for this one. That qualify for the handicap uh, toilet. Oh, sorry, handicapped restroom. For so make sure that the people with the wheelchair they can run inside and outside easily. This is one example. So you can see in the public area with many many um, toilets or um, laboratory in one restroom, and you see that it's a lot of uh, the regular one, but you need at least one or two with the handicap size. That means you use enough for the qualify for a rectangular 48, 30, or the circle 60 inches diameter. So that's required. And you look at this, that the circle for make sure that is okay for the run inside. Uh, this side or this side. And the number from the handicap, also we have calculate. I have uh, one problem or I will share with you about how calculate for how many uh, toilet, how many laboratory and how many handicap you need to design for in uh, one separate chapter later. This one is some more information um, when you design for the laboratory for the handicap one. Basically a lot of people they never use for the lower cabinets right here. Instead of that they use the board to cover the laboratory like this in the angle and look like the distance with the knee space. So the handicapped people they can um, use the laboratory because their knee not hits with the lower cabinet. So a lot of uh, the design right now they use for the board cover this one. For so make sure that the, the handicapped people they can put their knee over there, not, uh, them, not the pain in there. Water closet and you know. Uh, if you see this is the toilet, if you look at the side, you see that the maximum is 33, 36 inches for the bar in the back side from the restroom. Now, look at this one. For the handicapped one, the toilet's maximum height is 19 inches. They can start from 17 to 19 only for the height from the toilet on the top one right here. For the handicapped people and after that the rail should be 33 36 inches maximum in the center from the rail from the bar and after that you see you know um, 17 is similar with right here 17 19 you see 17 for you know and they have uh, two kind one of hung in the the wall and the other one uh, they have the shape it's like this it's low and the second one is uh, 17 inches maximum and the back and the bath top you can look at this they have uh, some kind they call that control area for the people can um, uh, put the hand on there and after that they have the signal for another one outside can hear that also we use for uh, the bar for the people they in case they can use it uh, the high is similar with the other one you see on the restroom. It's a 33, 36 inches maximum for the bar. And the back top right here, you look at this, at the distance they show right here, 24 for the length from the bar. And after that, 12 inches if you use a small one. And especially if you use the back top, you can use um, uh, both. If you like to use for the both bar because uh, one is low and the other one is higher. And the distance between them is 9 inches and you can see that you can design for this one. Uh, finally is shower. That's the plumbing fixture. The shower with the shower usually um, a lot of people they design for the bench in the side. This is the folding bench. 
for image so you can um, you can put this one right here or you can lift it up and the distance from the bar is 18 from the wall and 33 36 look like the normal one you use on uh, bathtub now if some disabled people they have the blind the blind doesn't they cannot see everything so how can they know uh, the letter or the number they put on elevator they have the one they call the Brawler alphabet and the Brawler's alphabet is a little bit swollen with um, uh, the, the half circle swollen and they have two different levels so you see right here the black and the white that mean a little bit swollen and the other one is a little bit slop uh, they have the rule so uh, with alphabet that the alphabet they can use like this they can touch and they know what is it same thing with the number so that's why <coughs> sorry basically they use their hand to touch in the dot and after that they figure out what letter or what number is this is example so you can see one blind people they come into elevator and they touch on each of them and they know what level or what letter they want to show on elevator uh, in the lobby or somewhere uh, the blind people they cannot see the the sign so that's why the main thing they use they can right now they have many uh, special can for they can touch with the wall this makes some kind of like little noise or they can touch with the middle or something like before they touch with another one close with their area and the can can make a I mean the shake or a noise so that's why they know where is it but about the designer we should know that you need to design 80 inches maximum from any side on the top of the ceiling so you need to measure from the floor up up to the side maximum 80 uh, inches 80 a0 inches for make sure that the people not touch um, with the head when they walk in there especially the blind people I think that's all for ADA I can share with you today of course this is just the standard one when you start to design many more in the course they will uh, tell you what you need to do for um, ADA and one more time ADA is stand for um, American Disability Act so that's why when you see ADA, you're thinking some design you need to do for uh, the disabled people. So now, if you look at here, it is the um, elevation for two-story house with uh, two car garage, open car garage. I really like the design like this. It's make very um, look at the house very, uh, I mean, flexible. So that's why I share with you right now for you can uh, make the coloring if you like. To do coloring for the quiz number two and because um, I saw a few of students they didn't enough time to do for coloring on quiz number one so I decided to do um, to give you this one earlier so that's one you can do that until the quiz number two coming so you ready you get 10 point credit for that one okay so one more time the lecture resource a canvas file textbook architects and my channel happy life to like youtube so you can uh, go my channel if you want to hear my voice or you want to s see some kind of like video clip if you want to see lecture only look like the reading and you can go with um, canvas live ada is a very important for one student in architectural major the reason because everything when you're thinking the design for the public service for example, restaurant, 24 fitness office, medical cleaner, um, car wash, or something like, uh, I mean, everything. Every office, you have the service for another people. And you're thinking, you need to design some of ADA. The reason, because you don't know who come to the office or some kind of the business, they have uh, disabled or not. So that's why before you design, you need to apply for the permits in the CD or something. You must design for ADA because this is required for the public service area. 
so that's why you need to thinking which one you need to design and which one you need to design for inside of that that's one that means the restroom the hallway the ramp the slab up ramp and inside from you know the distance for inside and the ceiling something like this is qualified with the ada for handicap design okay so thank you so much for watching and see you next time